Today we'll be running a nonlinear buckling analysis on an arrow structure panel. We'll begin by creating our simulation files and a linear buckling analysis. We'll use the results from the linear buckling analysis to create an initial imperfection load in our nonlinear buckling analysis. So since we'd like to use shells for our analysis, we'll mid-surface our geometry. And here I'll turn stitch edges on for our simulation settings. That will help reduce a step when we get to the FEM of having to stitch the geometry together to get a congruent mesh. Now, I like the mid-surface except for on the skin here, you can see that there are still some edges that we don't want. So I'll use Join Face Legacy to remove those. If we don't remove those, we'll get mesh feature lines in our finite element model. All right, so let's go to the FEM. We'll select our mid-surfaces and our points, which specify where our fastener locations are for connecting our stringers to our skin. Now we're ready to create a shell mesh. And I have customer default set to automatically inherit the material from the CAD model, which was specified already as aluminum. Here you can see in our physical property table that we are inheriting our material. And for our mesh associated data, we are inheriting the thickness from our mid surface. So here you can see the thickness as a contour plot. All right, next we'll connect our stringers to our skin using the spot weld command. Here we'll select all of our points our wing skin for our top face and our stringer faces for our bottom faces. And we'll use the C bush element to make that connection. And here when I update the mesh you'll see that the shell meshes will align with our fastener locations and make a congruent mesh across our C bush. Next we'll assign some physical properties to our C bush elements. Here I'm going to put in a stiffness, same value for all degrees of freedom. And since we're putting in the same stiffness, I will just select the uh, absolute coordinate system for specifying our stiffness directions. All right, next we'll move to the sim where we'll put a fixed constraint on the polygon edges on one side of our panel and we'll put a user defined constraint on the edges on the other to constrain it in degrees of freedom one, two, four, and five. Leaving it free in three, which we'll define as a Z axis along the edge of the stringer. So here we'll define that z-axis with a coordinate system that we'll define first with an origin at an arbitrary location and then we'll specify our z-axis with two points and here we'll use the the vector dialog to more easily specify those two points along an edge of the stringer. All right, and then our z-axis we'll put parallel to the face of the skin and the stringer. All right, so that'll be the coordinate system for our user-defined constraint. Next, we'll create a unit load, and we'll apply that on the same edges as our user-defined constraint. 
and we'll specify the direction with two points along the edge of the stringer. Next, we're going to create glue because the fasteners alone don't give an accurate representation of what will happen when the part buckles. For our linear buckling, we're going to create some glue. And here I'll manually specify my regions. We'll put in a search distance and create our glue. Now at this point, we're done with the specification of the glue, but because I'm thinking forward to reusing those regions for creating contact, we want to ensure that the normal directions are pointing towards each other from the skin and the stringers. So I'll go ahead and reverse the skin normal direction for my region to select the bottom for our contact, which we'll create in just a bit. So here we've gone ahead and solved. I've paused the video. It takes about three seconds to run and we'll take a look at our linear buckling results. Now here our first mode, since we put in a unit load, will be the load that will cause buckling. So here we can see at about 75,000 pounds we're getting buckling predicted with the shape that you see here in the panel or the skin. So what I'll do is we'll write out those results as a field node versus XYZ displacement. Next we'll create our nonlinear solution. We'll select large displacements and we'll specify an end time that will be the load that we'd like to apply. And the number of increments we'll set to give us results at every 10,000 pounds. So that's the 500,000 divided by 50. We'll go ahead and reuse our constraints Go ahead and add those to our nonlinear solution. And then we'll create a transient load. And we're going to specify the magnitude of the load based on the time of the analysis. So at zero, it'll be zero pounds, and we'll just make a linear ramp up to half a million pounds at half a million seconds. So that way, when we plot our results versus time, it will be the same as plotting them versus the applied load. All right, so here we'll specify the direction for our transient load in a similar fashion by specifying two points along the edge of the stringer. All right, next we'll create our surface-to-surface -surface contact and we'll reuse those regions that we defined earlier when we created our glue. Then we'll select a min and max search distance for our contact. And then we can specify our initial imperfection. And here I'm gonna select all the polygon faces in our skin and our stringers and here we'll select our node displacement table field that we wrote out earlier from our linear buckling results and we'll specify a scale factor of 1 one hundredth. That will scale the displacement results. Now we're ready to run and here we can monitor the displacement results in our solution control monitor. We can also monitor the convergence as the solution runs. But here I'll go ahead and pause the video and you can see the elapsed time in the bottom right hand corner. But you'll notice that the result will progress up to a certain time and then it will flatten out as it's not able to get any further because the panel cripples and becomes unstable. 
So once it completes, we'll go ahead and take a look at those results. And here we can animate those results across iterations and see first how the panel buckles and then how the stringers cripple. And if we'd like to see at what load exactly the panel buckles and the stringers will cripple, we can go ahead and plot a couple of points as a function of time, one being on the panel and one on the stringer. So here we can see where the initial buckling occurs around 75,000 pounds and then where our crippling occurs on our red curve which is on our stringer. Alright, so now that we've created our simulation models, one of the very powerful things about SimCenter 3D is the ability to modify the geometry and update our simulation model to reflect those changes. So here I'm going to change my top flange width on our stringers from an inch and a quarter to two inches. So you can see they're a bit bigger now. And I'd like to evaluate that change's effect on the buckling characteristics of our panel. So here I'll go to the FEM. You can see our geometry is updated. We just need to hit the update button in order to get the mesh to update. And here we can see our linear buckling analysis and I'm going to clone that one because we need to run it again because our mesh has updated. So I'll call this one 105A and we'll go ahead and run that. Here I'll pause the video again and we can review our results. And again we'll write out the first mode buckling displacement results as a field. But first let's go ahead and take a look at our results side by side with our original model with the thinner top flange and we can see that the buckling shape is similar but the first mode occurs at a slightly higher load. So let's go back to a single view with our updated results and we'll write out a field of node ID versus the displacement 3D general and we'll use that in a cloned solution for our nonlinear solution. Here we'll call this one 401A and we'll edit our initial imperfection to reference the new field that we just wrote out. Now we didn't do this last time but we can verify the initial imperfection by plotting the contours of the displacement for that initial imperfection. And there you can see it's at 1 100th scale from our displacement results from our first mode. All right, now we're ready to solve. And here again, I'll pause the video, but we can take a look at the solution monitor as the solution progresses. And you can see in the bottom right-hand corner after about three minutes the solution is completed. And we can re review our updated results. Now here I'll plot the last successful time step for displacement for our updated model side by side with our last successful time step for our original model. Go ahead and synchronize the views and you can see 
how the crippling has changed as a result of our geometry change. And probably the best way to see this is by creating an XY plot, which is what we'll do now. And our first plot will be for our original results. Here I'll select a point on the panel and a point on our stringer. And we'll go ahead and plot that. You can see where it buckles in the blue on the panel and then cripples on the stringer on the red curve. Then we'll go ahead and change our active view to our updated results and we'll create another graph selecting similar locations on the panel and on the stringer. And here we'll overlay those results onto our existing plot. So you can see that both models buckle at about the same point for the panel, but you can see that the stringer doesn't cripple until quite a bit further out due to that design change that we made to the flange, making it a bit wider. And that is how to run a nonlinear buckling analysis on an aerostructure panel.